The religion is the solution for the things happening all around the world. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim. Jihad basically means to strive to struggle. The Hindus and the Muslims will be united. He is not cosmic energy, he is more superior than that. Quran gives you the solution to the problems of humankind. Not that we shall despise each other. That according to Japan, India will be the superpower of the world. We will be a superpower, we will be far superior to the American. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam. الرسول اللہ وآلہ آلہ وصحابی اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ومن احسن قولا من من دعوی اللہ وعمل صالحوں قولا انن المسلمین رب شہلی صدری ویسلی امری وحل لقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. We are most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compared religion or the propagation of Islam, you are most welcome. Any sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This question is regarding the fatwas that are thrown at us every day. For the past week, every day in the newspapers, we've been reading about fatwas regarding everything and anything. Even on what Sanya Mirza wears, you know, in fact, it has come to a point that the non-Muslims are ridiculing and mocking the Muslims because of the fatwas. So how do we answer the non-Muslims? This was asked a very important question, a very good question, which I was discussing yesterday with the person from the media, that about Sanya Mirza. And we find in the newspapers about Sanya Mirza that she, last time she was dated at 42nd seat in Wimbledon, and recently she lost with the top seed, Sharapova, if not mistaken. And the issue is there that Sanya Mirza is a Muslim and she's wearing clothes, short skirts, revealing quite a large portion of the body, etc. So the question posed to her is often that, you're a Muslim, how come you wearing? So she gave a good reply that, why are you asking me the question? Are you asking this question to every other contestant? No. Why only to me? Just because I'm a Muslim? So my argument is, that if you ask any player, I can prove to the players of all the major religions, whether Christian, whether Hindu, or whether Muslim, that wearing such clothes is haram. Serena Williams, who's a top seed, number one, not in the US Open, world number one, I can prove to her from the Bible. The Bible says in the first Timothy, chapter number two, verse number nine, that wear clothes which are modest. A woman should be dressed up modestly with sobriety and with shamefacedness and should not wear costly array, pearls and gold. Sobriety, is this sobriety? Is it shamefacedness? Same in Hindu religion I can prove. Rig with. It says that Brahma has made you a lady, a woman. Therefore, lower your gaze and draw the veil over your head. So according to Hinduism, wearing such clothes is wrong. According to Christianity, such clothes is wrong. According to Islam, it is wrong. So why are the reporters only asking Sanya Mirza? Why not the others? The problem is the reporters have lack of knowledge of the other religions. Yes, fine. The Muslims are more practicing. Alhamdulillah. Summa alhamdulillah. So just because the Muslims are more practicing, that's the reason you are asking a Muslim. They should ask each and every lady contestant that most of them are going against the religion. So why aren't they asking them? They selectively pick up because it is news. If they are Sahina Williams, she'll say, can I hang to you? And neither will the Christian world object to because they're least bothered in following the scriptures. For example, what happened in 9-11? After the 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers, in Canada there was a survey that what do the Muslims think about the Twin Tower blast? Almost all of them said it is wrong. We condemn it. There was a 14-year-old boy in Ottawa who said what they did is right. And they bring his clipping headlines. Oh, this Muslim boy says what 11 September, what happened, Twin Tower is right. So they're fishing. They want some answer and they're hunting. When they get that, they blow it out of proportion. So it is nothing but a gimmick of the media, which we unnecessarily should not be involved in that. But the question is very good. How do we reply? And yesterday we were discussing with the people who are from media, and I told him that every religion says it's wrong. So why isn't the media highlighting that? Isn't that news? So one is the fault of the media. I would even blame the Muslims. And we find in the newspaper that it several comments and I'm told on the television, people give several comments, fatwas of the Muslims. 
whether a religious person or a politician or whether he be a businessman. There were views of Muslims taken across the world. And most of the religious leaders, they said it is haram. Some men think that we should not come in. A minority of the ulama said that in sports, it's allowed. So even the ulama, they have different opinions. But the majority of the ulama said, haram is wrong, she can't sport, blah, blah, blah. And the other so-called, so-called secular invert commas, Muslims, they said what she's doing is fine, we're with her. And many women gave their comments. Those women, most of them, I did not hear of any woman in hijab giving the comment that what she's doing is wrong. All the women are not doing hijab, they are giving the comment what Sanya means that it is right, that she is uplifting the name of the country, of Islam, etc. blah, 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 blah. And all these politicians giving, oh, he's telling these religious people, they don't know about sports. Therefore, they're giving the reply and people are clapping. Are, kya jawab diya? Oh, they don't know about sports. Does he know about Islam? So for me, Islam is more important than sports. That puts him down. Now coming to the other issues of politicians saying, oh, we are proud of Sanya Mirza and etc. That's political vote bank. I would like to ask these politicians. You know what they're saying? That see, sports is an international game. So what is right for the international game that sportsman or woman should be allowed to do. I said, okay, I agree with your argument. I'll ask the next question. Do you know there's a sport called beach volleyball, mainly for the girls? Do you know that? I don't know whether it's international. Tomorrow, if it becomes international, will you send your daughter wearing a bikini on the beach? Will you? Yes or no? I'm asking these so-called politicians, Muslim or non-Muslim. Will this Muslim politician send his daughter Wearing a bikini for the beach volleyball. Will they? Okay, fine. Tomorrow, there may be nude swimming. Where do you put the limit? If tomorrow nude swimming becomes an international sport, will you agree your daughter doing swimming nude? And I will prove it to you, being nude is better than wearing clothes. It is better for swimming. Wallah. If you want to ask logically, <laughs> if someone proves tomorrow that nude swimming is better than wearing even that, so will you agree with that? Where is the limitation? Where do you draw a line? Previously, adultery was wrong, long back, hundreds of years back. Then adultery becomes common. Homosexuality was wrong. Today, homosexuality is right. Fine. Pornography is legal. Today's paper I read that UK is spending millions of pounds in restricting child pornography. I said, why? Pornography was prohibited several years back. Today it has become a part and parcel of life, so pornography has become legal in many countries. But child pornography, most of the countries, prohibited. Tomorrow, child pornography will become common, so you legalize that also. Now you have gay marriages, correct, in Canada. A few years back it was prohibited. So where do you draw the line? We should have our values of life. So I'm asking these politicians, will you send your daughter for a beach volleyball? in the bikini. So, we should know how to reply rather than get entangled. As far as the Muslim ulmas are concerned, I'm sorry, I don't want to speak against them, but I'm educating them because this is my field. What the fatwa is given by the ulmas that what Sanya Mirza said is wrong, I'm with them. But how to reply? I would like them to change their style. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 125, Invite all the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways of best and most gracious. I am asking the question, a simple, any ulma you ask, which is a bigger haram? Not offering salah or wearing short sand skirts? The Sai Hadith of Bukhari says, a difference between a moment and a kafir is salah. Fine. That means next to shirk, the sin is not offering salah. I am asking these Indian cricketers, male cricketers, I don't want to name them, do all of them offer salah? So do they give a fatwa that this Indian cricketer is doing wrong? Why? The actors, they are doing shirk. Majority of the Muslim actors of Bollywood, they are doing shirk. They do idol worship on the screen, they're allowed. Do they pass a fatwa against them? Maybe someone has in the past. So when the reporter comes, 
you tell them that that's a bigger issue than this. That doesn't mean what Sanya Mirza is doing. That. But at least we are told that Sanya Mirza offers five times Salah. So what she is doing is not wearing proper clothes. I disagree with that. But yet she is better than the Muslim actor doing shirk. The Muslim cricket are not offering Salah. So this is the way if you answer, the whole media hype will go down. That doesn't mean you agree that what Sanya Mirza is doing is right. You don't agree. What is wrong is wrong. But you should know how to turn the tables over. If the media comes to me, which I'm not giving them bites for this is best known to me, I will tell them that if you ask me the question, I'll give a general answer. If you're talking about sportsmen, even the cricketer who's a Muslim is a sportsman, you can see Salah time is there, he's on the field. He's not going for a Salah. Haram. Which is the bigger haram? Not offering Salah for a cricket game. And the people who watch also don't offer Salah. That is also haram. <laughs> 22 people playing the game and 22 millions of fools watching it. So the person who's playing cricket, you can see with your eyes. He's not offering Salah. Is that a bigger haram? Or wearing less clothes a bigger haram? Any answer? Which is the bigger haram? Which is the bigger haram? Not offering Salah. Not having salah. Friday Salah also they're missing. Or some cricket on the Friday, I'll read Namaz. Just read the Quran in the Jumma Jumma, in the other place. Some Muslim cricketers will never miss Eid Salah, which is not a farad also. Eid Salah is not a farad. You should offer, alhamdulillah. But it's not a farad. So Eid they will not miss. Other Salah, fine. Salah, 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 Sal so according to me, Sanya Mirza is a better Muslim than whatever little bit I know about her. No? I haven't interviewed her. I have not read much about her. Whatever three, four things, and she's a good tennis player. She offers Salah, and her desk code is not correct. These are the few things I know about. I don't know about her personal things. Neither do I know the personal things about the Indian cricketers, whether they have been caught in a betting match or what has happened, or they have been exposed, right or wrong, Allah Allah. But at least I know that there are many cricketers, Indian, who don't offer Salah. But that will not come as headlines that the Muslim people give a fatwa that the Muslim cricketer is doing haram. Will that come? It may come as a news brief. We have to educate the press. We have to educate them about Islam. And then, fine, at least I congratulate Sanya Mirza that even if she's wearing such clothes which is haram in Islam, she's at least offering five times Salah. That doesn't mean I'm agreeing what she's doing is right about wearing clothes. Please, don't misunderstand me that I'm here to support Sanya Mirza. I don't know her also. But I'm educating the ulamas how to reply. I'm educating them how to reply in the media. How to turn the tables over. When I speak a non-Muslim, I said most of the major religions, they prohibit very such clothes. And you see in the past, if you see Wimbledon and Badminton of the previous few years back, 10 years back, 20 years, 40 years back, they were full clothes. I'm asking the question that if Sanya Mirza, if she wears a loose tracksuit, even that's not fully Islamic. But it is better than this. What will be the difference in our performance? 1%? 2%? 3%? Not more than that. Surely Allah's help is more important. The question yet remains, can a woman play in public? That's a different question. Huh? So don't say Dr. Zakin, I said that women in hijab can play. That's a different question altogether. So please, when I give an answer, Ha, ah, Dr. Zakina gave the fatwa that women, if they wear proper hijab, they can play tennis in front of public. No. I'm trying to get the lesser evil. But that you need not tell to the public, to the non-Muslim press. Whether playing in public or not for a woman is the second question. And then he gave his view that wearing clothes is wrong. At least that was one alim which I thought gave a right answer. That whether a woman displaying her ability in the general public but yes, there are views that if a woman is in hijab, she can give a talk in the public. Difference of opinion is there, which you cannot say for sure. So that is yet there. So in that context, fine, if a woman is properly dressed up, etc., and she is not exposing whether can she play, is yet debatable. I'm not saying it's haram. But at least we can say that she should wear proper clothes. And there are women playing badminton in Iran wearing scarves. And if you wear scarves, you can take another 2-3% in performance down. So if the performance goes down, at least you can expect the help of Allah. 
So I will tell these non-Muslim press that we believe in the help of Allah is more important than the help of a skirt. If you say that wearing a skirt is preferable to win the game, I say fine, it may be one or two percent better. But Allah's help is more important. Allah's help is more important. I know in our office, it's compulsory every person coming to office should read about 15 minutes, one ruku, translation of Quran. In Arabic and the translation, in the language you understand the best. If you calculate if there are 200 people working, 15 minutes means in a month I'm losing lakhs of rupees. Calculate. At least three salahs they offer in Jamaat. Three salahs if you calculate 15 minutes. So every day one hour of how many people? A couple of hundred people. In a month, lakhs of rupees going. Business terminology, yes, loss. No two doubt about it. But it's an investment according to me. Investment. Let the person in the Quran be honest. He'll be honest. Don't cheat. Do hard work. Do jihad. Jihad means striving. Eh? Strive in the way of Allah. One hour, he may give two, three hours additional output for me. Even if he doesn't do, Allah will give me. No problem. Even if they don't improve, at least Allah will give me some up. So what we are doing here, believe me, what we are doing, if I have to put all my brains together, wallah, we couldn't have done without Allah's help. Our thing will be 0.0001% our efforts. It is Allah's help. But Allah's help comes only when you put your effort. Huh? It is because of Allah. But Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ankabu, chapter number 29, verse number 69, if you strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will open up your pathways. So, the media is their sister. We should know how to reply. The answer given to non-Muslim, the strategy may change. The answer remains the same. So the answer is that, they, that wearing clothes is wrong. But yet, we have to give the other aspect of Islam and be able to turn the tables over rather than become part and parcel of making Islam a scapegoat. Hope that answers the question. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahabi ajmain. Amma abad. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa min ahsun kawla min man zaila Allahi. Wa amil salihaun. Kawla inna ni al-Muslimin. Rabbi shahli sadri. Wa yisilli amri. Wa ahlu al-ugdata min lisani yafqahu kawli. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. You are most welcome to ask any questions on Islam and compiled religion or the propagation of Islam. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to know what is jinn and how does it affect our human life? Because recently we have seen in the news that two sisters. Uh, people said they had a jinn, bad jinn in there, and they killed their father. We were asked a question that, what are the jinns? And can it affect the people? And he read a news that the two sisters who had bad jinn in them and they killed their father. News I haven't read, but as far as jinn is concerned, the two creations, one is the seen and one is the unseen creation. The angels don't have a free will of their own. Whatever Allah says, they believe. The human being and a jinn, they have a free will. They can either obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they can disobey. So amongst the creation who have a free will are the human beings and the jinn. The human beings are seen creatures. The jinn normally they are unseen. Normally, in normal circumstances, they are unseen. So these creations have a free will. So therefore the Quran was revealed for the complete world, including the jinn and the human being. Even they have a free will. Like in the human beings, there are people who follow Allah's commandments. They are the good people, like the angels, or better than the angels. Those who disobey, they become brothers of the Satan. Similarly, the jinns, those who obey Allah's commandment, they are good jinns and the bad jinns. The bad jinns are the Satan. And Allah says in the last chapter of the Quran, Surah Nas, chapter number 114, verse number 1 to 6, That there are people who whisper in your ear and withdraw. These are the ones who are amongst the men and jinn. That means the Satan category, the evil category of two types. Amongst the jinn and the men. The men who are seen and the disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the seen Satans. The unseen Satans are the jinns. So the jinns is a creation which has a free will. 
like human beings that are good and bad. Similarly, in the jinn also there are good and bad. And can they come in a human being? Yes, they can come. A human being can be possessed by jinn. And for this, the two surahs of the Quran, the Mu'azza 10, chapter number 113 114, the last two surahs of the Quran, the Mu'azza 10, the one I recited, Surah Nas and Surah Falak. These two surahs were revealed as a treatment, as a remedy for this. So there are jinn. Science hasn't reached that far to completely identify this concept. So therefore, in science, there is no 100% proof jinns are there, but neither is there proof that there are no jinns. There are certain diseases which the psychologists say it is more with the brain, with the human body, and they cannot categorize in any of the scientific diseases which is known. Science hasn't reached that far. Maybe, inshallah, 20 years later, 30 years later, 100 years later, science will advance and they will agree with the concept of the Quran. Since the Quran says there are jinn, we have to believe in it. There are good jinns, there are bad jinns, etc. But what we have to do is we have to have trust and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the two surahs which have been revealed in the Quran for the treatment is Surah Falakh and Surah Nas. So, regarding the situation of these two sisters, I don't know whether it existed or not. But you have to realize that to say that they're jinn, normally always say that people take advantage of the position and they try and make a fast buck. So you have people, you know, you go in every nook and corner in most of the religion, whether it be Hinduism, Christianity or Islam. You have religious people making a fast buck, fast money. They do something, you know, they throw some powder, bhuti, this, that, whether it be Baba. So we have to be careful of that. And they take away from last mother. My advice to anyone who says it's the person is possessed, show your child or your friend to a normal doctor. Then you can show to a specialist and finally to a psychiatrist. And after there's no cure, then you can search and say that it can fall in the category. Because normally some of the diseases are more of psychological disease, which a layman will say it's a possession of jinn, which may not be. That doesn't mean jinn don't exist. Jinn exists. A human being can be possessed. And there's a book written by Dr. Bilal Phillips, rather the translation of one of the books on jinns and demons that gives more details. And there are very few people who really know how to treat the jinn based on Quran and Sunnah. And normally the moment the person tries to make a fast money out of it, you can identify a shortcut. If he asks you for certain gain, then chances of him being in that category 99.99%. But if he initially doesn't ask for money, that doesn't mean that he doesn't fall in that category. He may later on milk the cow. Fine? So many a times they have habit of milking big cows or small cows, they leave aside. Oh, who admi paisa leta hai ne? Has to be a genuine case. You know, wo papa paisa leta hai ne? If you don't take money from your house, that doesn't mean that it's a genuine case. Maybe taking from those people who are rich, and there are people who always approach and ask me, tell them that first go to a doctor, then go to a psychiatrist, and then if they give up all the hope and there's no medical treatment for it, then you can think of a possibility that it can be a position of the jinn, etc. And then you have to approach a person, as you have seen his lifestyle, lifestyle also should be according to Quran Sunnah. If his lifestyle is not Quran Sunnah, how can he treat you? And the treatment is but natural, you have to recite verses of the Quran, the hadith mentioning that. But those who are the specialists in that field, Go to him rather than to any person, Tom Dick and Harry. Hope that answers the question. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam. Minka salam, ilayka salam. Ya Rabbu, innaka anta salam. Minka salam, ilayka salam. Li amrika yarjiu amru al-alam. بين يديك قلوب الأنام لأمرك يرجع أمر الأنام بين يديك قلوب 